In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 29, it says, Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. Yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe and none shall deliver it. See, we are in a day and an age that God is calling for His people. He's calling for the body of Christ to roar, to roar like never before. Uh, we are in a very, you know, every single day that we live and that we breathe, the days are seeming to get darker and darker. This world is getting crazier and crazier, and God has called for us to be like the line of the tribe of Judah, who is Jesus Christ. And He's calling for us to be like that every single day. And just like a lion roars, just like Jesus Christ, when He spoke, He roared. God is wanting for His people to roar. So I want to encourage you today. We're going to be talking about why do we roar? Why do lions roar? We're going to relate it to uh, why lions roar. But before we go any further, we can't go any further until we pray. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for all that you are, Lord. And God, I pray right now, God, even as we get into this podcast today, God, even as we get into your word and even, even as we discuss this topic, Lord, God, teach us. Teach us and mold us and train us to become better Christians, to be better people that you have called us to be, God. God, we want to seek after your word. We want to seek after your truth more than we want our truth. We want your truth. We want the only truth. We want you your word to live and to guide us every single day, Lord. God, we thank you. Holy Ghost, have your way in this podcast. In Jesus' name I pray, by the power of the Holy Ghost, and all glory and honor goes to our Father. Amen and amen. Now is the time to jump in. Now is the time to jump in with everything that is within you. Another reason that a lion roars, lions roar to show their power. To show their power. So it's a little bit different than just roaring as a way to gauge the strength, but this is to show their power, you know. And uh, I, I, God showed me that this is that anointing, you know, the anointing is what destroys the yoke of bondages in our life. It is that true power in your life to overcome the bondages, the things that have held you back. And uh, when you roar, you're, you, God wants you to roar like those young lions are supposed to roar, and it's going to show who the creation that God has made you, that spiritual creation that He has called you to be. You know, He hasn't called you just to be a father, just to be a mother, just to be a brother, sister, uh, husband, wife, whatever it is, but He's got a calling on your life. You know, I, I probably say this too much on my podcast, but it, I, I truly believe that every single one of you watching this you have a calling on your life. It may not be to be a preacher. It may not be to be a podcast host. It may not be to a singer, but God's got a calling on your life. He's got a purpose for you, a greater purpose. And, 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 you know, and, and it's my hope that you will do everything you can, that you will find what that purpose is. And you know why I say that? I say this a lot when I preach. There is no greater feeling in this world than to know that you're being used in your calling for God. There is no greater feeling. You know, I don't care if you are a professional football player and you won a Super Bowl and you've been at the pinnacle of whatever it is, whatever, whatever uh, profession that you find yourself in, no matter what kind of a war that you can be, that you can win in school or you can win in your job, it's a great feeling. It's a good feeling to, to, to achieve things, but there ain't nothing that feels better. Then I know in my personal life, I've achieved different things. There's a lot of things that the Lord has blessed me with. I've been, had a very, lived a very favored life. But there's nothing, there's no better feeling on this planet that I've ever felt than to know that I'm being used in my calling, my purpose that He has for my life. And so it's my hope, part of what I feel like God's called me to do, is to encourage and to uplift and to strengthen and to, to roar so that others can reach that in their lives as well. So that they can find the true power 
that God has placed inside of them. Not the power of themselves, but the anointing that He places in your life that destroys the yoke of any bondage that the devil would try to pull you down with. The scripture I'm going to read is 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, we're going to be reading verses 21 through 29, and it says, I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. See, so he says, he's, I'm coming to you not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the truth, and that, though that, that the lies that, that, are, that are coming forth, they're not the truth. You know, that's what's crazy about this world today. You know, they're trying to present these lies as truth. And that's not what the Word, the word of God tells you. That's not the truth. The truth of God's Word is here and will always be here. That's why the lion tries to come and roar as a roaring lion. He's not a lion. See, God's called you to be young lions. He ain't called the devil to be a lion. He, ain't called, he's called, he tries to roar and tries to act like a lion. He can never be a lion. He can never roar like a lion. But see, God has placed His anointing upon us to destroy the yoke of any bondage that has held us back so that we can show the true power of God's strength in us. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you, which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. So he's trying to tell you, he said, he, he said, these are the things that I'm writing to you, to those that are trying to seduce you, to those that, that this world is trying to change the Word of God, trying to change it into a lie. And the things that he's trying to bring into the church house today, they are lies. But see, if we don't have that anointing, if we don't, have, if we don't stand on that power, if one, we don't roar like we're supposed to, we can't be in right standing with Him. And if we're not in right standing with Him, we can't be overcomers. And when, if we're not overcomers, we definitely don't have that anointing, which is what the anointing does. It destroys the yoke of bondage. And if we have that yoke of bondage in our life, then we are susceptible to believing the lies of the world, the lies of the enemy. So I'm basically showing you why is it that churches today are allowing these lies to come forth or are preaching these things or standing for these things because they've not gone through the roar process. They've not true gone through this whole process of knowing what it truly means to stand on the truth. Because he says, that you, I'm speaking to you, you know the truth, so don't allow li lies to come in and lie to you. Know that I have come to you to bring everlasting life, and that I'm preaching these things concerning them that seduce you. Verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him that abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is, is truth, and is no lie, and even as has taught you, ye shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when ye shall appear, we may have confidence and not ashamed, not be ashamed before him at his coming. If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that which doth righteousness is born of him. So he's telling you right here, he says, But the anointing which ye have received. It abides in you. When you abide in Him, when you receive Him in you, and when you allow Him, to, when, you, when you are in right standing with Him and you've become an overcomer in Him, then you have received that anointing that gives you that eternal promise in your life. It gives you the power to become the sons and daughters of God. But when you don't go through that process, that's when you allow the enemy to come in and lie. That's when you allow the carnal mind to come in and lie and deceive. And see, that's what God has, has called us not to do. We can't allow the devil, the, the enemy, to deceive us. See, it says, it's not that any man teach you. 
See, God hasn't called for us to listen to the teachings of man. See, that's what happens today, is that instead of getting in the Word of God, they, they, don't, they don't know how to, uh, you know, they create what, we, what you've heard. They, re, they create my truth. Well, I, I know what God told me. I know what I believe. Well, what you believe, is it backed up by the Word of God? If it is not backed up by the Word of God, then it is a lie. It is in error. It is incorrect. If you can't prove to me what you believe in the Word, then you are in error. I'm in error. If I believe anything that is not in the Word of God, I'm in error, and i got to get it changed. i got to get it corrected in my life. Because if I don't, it's going to corrupt my roar. And so when I go to try to show the power of the Holy Ghost, I try to show the power, that anointing in my life. See, the thing is, is that the anointing flows through a pure vessel. The anointing will flow through a pure vessel, and if we're too busy doing our own thing and listening to the lies of the enemy, it can't flow through a pure vessel. We're not that pure vessel that he's called for us to be. We're not going to be in right standing like he wants us to be. And we can't show, like, just like the, what a lion does, he shows, shows their power by their roar. So the words that you speak whenever you're standing up and trying to roar, it's going to come out. And if you find yourself at a place where your roar has no anointing, it's going to show. And not everybody will see it, but the ones that are anointed the ones that are in right standing, the ones that are overcomers of their flesh, they're the ones that are listening to the Word of God. Those are the ones that know the truth, and they're the ones that have the anointing because it's destroyed the yoke of the bondage in their lives. So that's why it's important that we understand. And so that you understand why is this seeped into the church today? Why is this the things that I talked about at the beginning of the podcast? Why is that, why is that happening? Well, we're showing you. <laughs> through the lion's roar. Because <laughs> we're allowing the enemies to seduce us. We're allowing our flesh and our carnal mind to seduce our spiritual creation. To allow, we're allowing compromise in. The Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. You've heard me say that a little bunch on this podcast, but it's true. You let a little leaven in, the whole lump is going to be corrupted. And when you do that, when you roar, you're not going to be showing your, the power of God's might. You may, you may be showing your power and what you think. You may be able to scream. You may be able to yell. You may be able to look passionate. You may be able to be a motivational speaker. There's a lot of good speakers out there. There's a lot better speakers than me. But I just pray that every time that I speak, that I speak through the anointing of God's Word. So when we roar, we roar to show God's power. And the last and final thing that we'll discuss on today's podcast as a reason that a lion roars is to tell other lions where they are. And uh, I, I think this is funny because, you know, we've, we've been going over the ROAR, the acronym ROAR. And one of, the, one of the main reasons that a lion will roar is to tell other lions uh, where they are. And uh, uh, it's that, that revelation, you know. Uh, God wants us to roar uh, so that he can reveal himself to us and so that we can also reveal ourselves to him. And, uh, you know, so many times we don't want to reveal Ourself. We got things in our life that we are scared of. We got things that uh, we don't like. But see, the more that we reveal ourselves to Him, the more He's going to reveal Himself to us so that we can change and He can mold us and form us into who God has called us to be. And uh, He wants to. He wants to reveal Himself every single day to us. And see, lions do that. Lions will roar to reveal themselves. And uh, you know, one thing I think it's cool about that is, is a lion's not scared 
to reveal himself. A lion knows and is confident and knows who they are. And see, that's what God wants us. God wants us to rise up. God wants us, one, to be in right standing with him. He wants us to understand that we are overcomers, that he's going to equip us with his anointing. And when he does all of those things, then he is going to equip us that, with that revelation. And what is that revelation? That revelation is he is revealing himself to us so that we can reveal ourselves to him. We can say, God, here I am. Take everything out of me that is not of you and put in everything that is of you inside of me. And see, and, and when we do that, when we reveal ourselves to him, God, is going to reveal himself to us and we're going to stand up and be the men and women that God has called us to be. We're going to stand strong on the word of God that he has called for our life and we're going to reach that mark. Uh, the scripture I want to read for you is in Philippians chapter 3. This is uh, if you've uh, been in church uh, in any time in your life you definitely should have read this scripture and if you haven't then shame on you. Or shame on your pastor. I'm just kidding. No, um, Roman, Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. See, all these things, all the knowledge of this world and all these things, all these things you can do with your hands, all these ceremonies that you can do in yourself, he says, I count them but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I might win Christ. He says, I count them but dung. What is dung? Dung is poo-poo. <laughs> it is poop. He counts it but nothing. Zero. Anything you can do in yourself, he, counts it. he says he counts it but loss. It's nothing. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness... There's that righteousness. It's not righteousness that we can build up in ourselves. It's not a righteousness that we can do in ourselves or through a ceremony or through works, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is in God by faith. See, He's wanting us to achieve that righteousness, that right standing with Him through our faith. So if you're going through something right now, just like I talked about earlier, be thankful that you're going through something because it's through that, that, that trial or that tribulation, or that thing that you're going through, that God is going to create right standing with him because in that right standing, he's going to create faith inside of you. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So even though you don't see your way out, you may be in a black hole and you don't know how you're going to get out of that black hole, but it's through faith in him that you're going to be an overcomer that he's going to reveal himself to you. Ooh, righteous overcoming anointed revelation. That I might know him in the power of his resurrection. That's what he wants. He wants us to know him in the power of his resurrection. And how, does, how do we know him? When he reveals himself to us. Because we revealed ourselves to him. We haven't hid. We haven't, we haven't stuck our head in the sand. We haven't tried to hide our face. But we've come to him open faced and saying, God, here I am. In the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained. See, we can't ever get to the place where we think we've already attained. It's a daily process. Paul says, I die daily. I pick up my cross and I die daily. See, that's the problem is we get comfortable. I talked about it earlier in the podcast. We get too comfortable in our faith and our walk with Him. And we think that we've already reached the most amount of right standing. We can't get more righteous. That's when we become an error. This is not that I had already attained. Either we're already perfect. Sorry, we're not perfect. We've not already attained that perfection but I follow after it. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in 
Christ Jesus. See, the more that you are uh, striving to be in right standing with Him, and you're overcoming your past, and you're forgetting those things which are in your past, and you're moving forward through the power of His might, when you're moving forward in the anointing, then He can become to reveal Himself unto you, and you begin to reach the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. He's telling you the whole process right here. Let us, therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything be, be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. So the more that you're striving to do these things, it's saying that you're not always going to be perfect. We're striving. We're doing this every single day. And when you're not where you need to be, when you allow Him to speak to you, He will reveal this unto you. He will reveal exactly what you need to do. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have us for as an example. It tells you to mark those that walk in that same as an example. So if you have men and women of God in your life that are walking and, and, and doing the things that God has called them to do, mark them as an example and follow after and do like they do. Not because they are holy or not because they are righteous, but because they are following Christ. Even like Paul says, I follow me as I follow Christ. So, I want to encourage you today. Don't be a Christian that compromises. Don't be a Christian that sticks your head in the sand. Don't, you know, there's a lot of issues that we face today, and there's a lot of things that we come up. And a lot of times when the tough things come, we just we, we veer away from it. But it's time for God, for God's people to rise up and to roar like we've never roared before. And how do you roar? You strive for righteousness, which is right standing. And the more that you strive for right standing, what are you doing? You're gauging the strength. You're gauging, just like a lion roars, to gauge strength. You're gauging your own strength. You're gauging the strength that God has put inside of you. Then you understand that He has made you an overcomer. How do you become an overcomer? By defending, like a lion does, he roars to defend its territory and to run off intruders. Be that overcomer that God has called you to be. And when you become in right standing with him and you become that overcomer that he's called you to be, then what happens? He begins to fill you with his anointing because you've, become that, you've, bec you've started that purification process to become more like his son. And when you begin to let Him pour that anointing on your life because you're steadily striving to be in right standing, you're overcoming your flesh, you're overcoming your carnal mind, then He gives you that anointing to overcome the bondages that have held you in your past. And when that happens, what happens there? You're showing the power that He's placed inside of you. And when you show that power that He's placed inside of you, He begins to reveal Himself to you. And when He reveals Himself to you, you reveal yourself to Him. And then you begin to roar like you've never roared before. And you roar to other lions. And you show them where you're at. And you're not afraid of any other devil that likes to come as a roaring lion. But you're standing up and being the man and being the woman that God has called you to be. I want to encourage you today... We're in dark times. We're in time. I'm not trying to, to make it sound like this is the last day or, or God's coming back tomorrow. None of us know. But you know what? There's a lot of things that are happening that are prophecy of the Bible that are starting to take place. So it's time to start waking up. Stand up and be those young lions that we talked about in Isaiah 5. Stand up and be those young lions that God has called you to be and roar like you have never roared 
before in your life. But you know what? Can't go any further. Can't go any further until we talk. Lock the doors. We ain't going nowhere until we talk about the Holy Ghost. All this stuff I talked to you today, if you don't have the Holy Ghost in your life, it makes it so much tougher to do. So I encourage you, if you don't know what the Holy Ghost is, if all you know the Holy Ghost is, is the, uh, the third part of the Godhead, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and that's all you know about it, I encourage you to do a deep dive in your Bible. Read in this Word what the Holy Ghost is, how it, how it plays in your life, what, how it's necessary in your life. I guarantee you, you look up the Spirit, you look up the Holy Spirit, you look up the Holy Ghost, you're going, to find, you're going to find yourself in the Bible for a very long time. It's very important to understand what the Holy Ghost is. And if you're not fill, infilled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you need to get filled. It's important. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. We appreciate all of our viewers, our, uh, all our viewers on YouTube, and then all of our listeners on all the different pad- podcasting platforms. I also want to encourage you to check out the Flame Network. That's the Flame Christian Network, RFC's Christian Network. Um, it's going 24 hours a day on your Roku device. Uh, on there, we uh, also have uh, Apostles Corner. We also have uh, Real Talk that's done by Revelation Generation, our young people here at Revival for Christ. Um, uh, we also show plays that we have. Uh, uh, Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover is a playwright, so we show plays on there. Um, we show shows on there. Uh, and we also have our live stream, our services from Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. So I encourage you to go check it out. The Flame Christian Network. We love for you to take uh, uh, take hold of that, and uh, we're excited because there's just some some things coming down the pike that we're hoping to do. Uh, one of those, I'm just give you a little tidbit of. We're talking about doing a a, a, a Christian uh, sitcom where it's comedy but also has a good message. So I'm excited and. Uh, uh, there's a character that I do in one of our plays that I'm excited to do for that sitcom if we get those wheels in motion. So just be, check us out on there. And uh, also do us a favor, go on to our YouTube page, um, like it. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to it and share it with your friends. Share it on Facebook, share it on your social media platforms. Get the word out, man. Help, help us roar. Help us roar to get the word of God out there today. Guys, thanks so much for listening. We love you guys so much. Join us next week as another episode of The Adventures in the Great Commission. Therefore, and teach all the nations by the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching all that I have commanded you. Now is the time to jump in. Now is the time to jump in with everything that is within you.